So the first question is always trying to find out what has actually happened because usually, um, so, so one partner we always work with in World Weather Attribution is the Red Cross. And so in most cases, they are the ones, uh, the first ones to say, oh, can, can we please do a study? There is, um, there, there is an extreme weather event that has huge impacts um, and, and it would be really useful if we would know the role of climate change. And so um, the reports that you get from, from uh, via the news or from the Red Cross or other disaster relief communities are usually that there are some floods somewhere uh, and people are displaced or, or something like that. So the first thing that we need to find out is, okay, what caused actually this event that has led to losses and damages? Was it uh, a one day extreme rainfall event or was it more that the whole season was very soggy or did it actually rain somewhere completely different further upstream but because of the hydrology uh, in, in the area the floods uh, happened at the place they did. So uh, and to answer that's the first question we need to answer and to do that we look at, uh, at observational data. So at data measured in, in weather stations, just records of rainfall uh, or temperature or whatever the event in question is. And yeah, and based on that, we then uh, make have to make a decision what is uh, a meaningful definition of this extreme event. So is it the one day maximum rainfall in uh, in a county or is it actually, was it a much larger event that that uh, affected half the country, uh, or was it a longer event? Um, yeah, and and then yeah, and then we have once we have made the decision of what the definition of the event is, then we start with the actual attribution work, and to do that is um, we need to find out what is possible weather in the world we live in today. So let's say. Uh, we had these reports about devastating floods and we found out that they were caused by, uh, by a week long uh, extreme rainfall event over, uh, over a specific county. And so we have used that um, seven day rainfall over the county as, um, as our event definition. So then we need to find out um, compared to all the possible rainfall events in the world we live in today, what is this extreme event? Is it a, a one in a hundred year event? Is it a one in 10 year event? Um, and to do that, we use observations of the past, but also um, simulations of possible weather done with climate models. Because of course our observations are always just one realization of possible weather, but not all the possible weather. Um, and then we might find out, okay, it's a one in 10 year event in the world we live in today. And then uh, we want to find out, has this event changed because of climate change? So what we do then is we simulate what is possible weather in the world that might have been without climate change. And because we know extremely well how many greenhouse gases have been put into the atmosphere since the beginning of the industrial revolution, we can take these greenhouse gases out of the atmospheres of the climate models we use. And so we then have a counterfactual world, a world that's exactly as our world today, but just without the greenhouse gases. And so then we simulate possible weather in that world and if we find that, for example, the same event is in that world, a one in a hundred year event, then we can say, um, because of anthropogenic climate change, so because of human induced climate change, this event has become 10 times more likely because that's the only difference in these two sets of experiments that we have done. And then that, that's what we then call the attribution. For Hurricane Harvey, we found that going through exactly the um, steps that, that I have outlined just now, uh, we found that this event uh, was made about three times more likely because of climate change. And, uh, or you can also say that this, this event was 15% more intense because of climate change. So that, that's, that, that, that were the results that we had. And 
um, while it might not sound like such a large number, when you when you think about just how much rainfall uh, uh, fell in in uh, in association with Harvey, uh, it was over a thousand millimeter per day, which is more than, for example, in the UK, uh, falls in a whole year. Um, if that was would have been fifteen percent less, also the damages would have been considerably uh, fewer. Oh yeah, absolutely. So um, there are there are generally two ways how um, climate change affects weather. So one is what we would call the thermodynamic effect or the the effect from the warming effect, because we have more greenhouse gases in the atmosphere the atmosphere overall gets warmer. That means on a global average, we have a higher likelihood for heat waves, a lower likelihood for cold waves. Warm, a warmer atmosphere can hold more water vapor. That needs to get out uh, as rainfall. So on a global average, we also see more extreme rainfall events. But then there is a second effect that, that I like to call the dynamic effect. Um, and that is means because we have changed the composition of the atmosphere, the atmospheric circulation is affected. That means where weather systems develop, how they move, where they move. And this second effect is very different depending on the region in the world you are in and the season. And these two effects can either work in the same direction. So you have, because of the warming, you expect to see more extreme rainfall. And you also get more low pressure systems bringing rain. So you get even more extreme rainfall than you would expect from the warming alone. But the two effects can also work in the opposite direction. So if, um, if the circulation has changed so that you just do not get any weather systems conducive to rain, then it will not rain no matter what the global average is doing in, in the region you live in. And so then the dynamics win, if, if you like, and, and rain, extreme rainfall is actually getting less likely or mm. not changing. And um, so what, we, what we've seen from the studies that, that we and, and other colleagues have done is that, for example, heat waves in, in Europe are their climate change is an absolute game changer. So the last study we have done was on the heat wave in Siberia earlier this year. And we found that, um, that this event was made at least 600 times more likely. It was oh, an wow. event that was basically impossible without climate change. But for other types, uh, for other extreme events, so in comparison, Harvey, for example, the rainfall associated with Harvey was made three times more likely. But there are also events, um, so we look, we have looked repeatedly at uh, rainfall in the Danube and Elbe um, area in, in Germany. There, um, the extreme rainfall did not change because of climate change. We also looked at, um, at a drought in Brazil in 2014, where climate change did not change the likelihood of, of that drought occurring. We've also, I've done with my team here in Oxford, we've done a lot of work in, in East Africa and on East African droughts. And that also is um, a type of event where climate change is, is playing a very minor role. So what we ultimately can do with attribution is to, um, to complete um, the, the causal chain. So from emissions of greenhouse gases of individual countries, individual companies, to um, then, of course, more greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, changes in global mean temperature, down to changing risk of extreme events and ultimately loss and damage. And by having this, um, this complete causal chain, we can also uh, say not only how climate change affected a particular extreme event, but we can also say how the emissions of the US affected um, a specific heat wave. So we have done a study together with colleagues from Norway where we looked at 
um, at, at the historic emissions from from the big all the big countries in the world, and then uh, at how that affected uh, a heat wave in Argentina that occurred in 2015. And the heat wave itself was made five times more likely overall, but the emissions from the U.S. alone made it 34 percent more likely. And and you can then of course not just do that for the U.S., but you can also um, do that for Exxon, yeah. Because we have we we have all the data on the emissions. We know uh, how much coal, oil, and gas uh, Exxon has dug up and sold um, in since yeah since the existence of that that company and for all other of the carbon majors as well. So um, scientifically, we can now show how. The um, the actions or the business model of these these companies affected lives uh, in yeah and is affecting lives today in through through the changing risks of of extreme weather events and um, yeah you can you can very quickly see that this um, might then be um, well in order to stop climate change we need to stop burning fossil fuel and and uh, as a global society and of course um one way to achieve that is that the global the national governments pass laws to achieve net zero emissions at a certain time and then these laws of course also need to put put into legislation so that actually all the actions that that lead to that are um are happening but it might be it might be quite difficult um, or it might take a very long time for all the nation states in the world to do that to to um, to pass such laws and the necessary legislation. What we also need is and what 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 that entails is that all the all the companies in the world who currently are based on burning fossil fuels need to change their business model. And we can ask them nicely um, and wait for them to do that, but that might also take a very long time. Or we could take them to court and, uh, and, uh, and try to use the legal system to speed up that process.